This is Jake's Car Audio and I'll be showing you how to use an ANL fuse holder. So first of all you want to grab your fuses. I'm using zero gauge wire so these will be 300 amps. Now we've got our fuse ready. Grab your fuse holder and we'll get to work. So unscrew the end caps and using the palm of your hand push the holder through. Pull it from the other end and once it's out you're ready to replace your fuse. Mine came with a 100 amp fuse already installed but I need to replace this. So get your allen key and undo the, the bolt that is holding the fuse down. Put the bolt and washer to one side, undo the other side and now you're ready to replace the fuse. So line up with the bolt holes, put the washer back, the bolt back, do it up by hand first, it's a little bit easier if I'm honest. And then finally tighten it with an allen wrench. A little trick I use is to grab the actual fuse and hold it tightly in the palm of my hand. This is because the fuse rotates when you're tightening the bolt up and if it's rotated it won't actually fit the fuse holder shell. So just put the other side on, washer, bolt, tighten it up with an allen key and there you go, your fuse is fitted. Looks good to me. Slide that back in, you might have to wiggle it a little bit since it has rubber grommets. And then fit your end caps back on. And that's your fuse holder, ready and done. This one I did from earlier too. These have mounting screw holes in the bottom which is really great for keeping your project clean and tidy. So now we've installed our fuse in the fuse holder, we need to install it into the wire. Here's the wire I did, if you want to know how to crimp and heat shrink check my last video, I'll help you out. Grab some wire cutters and a pair of scissors to chop off the rubber insulator, an allen key is needed or you could use a multi-tool screwdriver set, I got this from Amazon, really useful. Unscrew the end caps again, slide it out, push it with the palm of your hand, undo the grub screw, a little bit more. Once it's almost out, about there looks good. Now you're ready to install your wire. If you're doing this indoors I'd recommend grabbing a tray because it does get a bit messy. So cut where you need the wire to be cut with the wire cutters if you're installing it near a battery I would recommend no longer than 6 to 12 inches of wire length. Now let's cut, we're ready to strip the insulator. To know the length of where to cut just put it next to the actual fuse holder and use your thumb as a guide. Put the scissors next to your thumb, chop away be careful not to chop any copper strands though and then pull it off. Get rid of any loose bits or frayed bits and once that's done pinch and twist the wire. Fit your fuse holder end cap onto the wire and insert it into the end. Give it a little wiggle too this turns the wire into a sort of cylinder shape which I find is much better for the grub screw to make contact with. So I just reinsert that, tighten that up, make sure to hold the wire as you can see I'm holding it with my thumb and index finger. Push it back in, around halfway on the grub screw is good and then you can reinsert the end cap. Okay that's one side done. Repeat it for the other side, so undo the grub screw almost all of the way, get our wire, mark out the length to cut the insulator by using our thumb as a guide, using scissors slowly chop around being careful not to destroy any copper, get rid of any frayed bits, pinch and twist.
put your end cap on. Make sure to remember that bit. Now we can insert it into the actual fuse holder. So push it in, give it a little wiggle, and we're ready to screw it down. Let's tighten that up as much as possible. Okay, good. Reinstall the end cap, and there you go. That's your fuse holder done and sorted. If you've got any questions, leave a comment. Make sure to subscribe and click the bell notification for more. Thanks for watching.